It might have gotten the axe after only three seasons, but we're still hungry for more. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Santa Clarita diet moments. Hey, what's up? I'm Gary. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're taking a look at the best scenes from this sadly short-lived Netflix series. We'd suggest catching up with this underrated show before we spoil anything for you. Tell us how much. Five grand. Cash. Five grand? Jesus. You got an expensive hobby lover, boy. Number 10. Abby and Eric Kiss Abby is a fearless, free spirit with reckless tendencies, while Eric is a sensible intellectual who lacks confidence. The phone thing didn't work. It made it worse. Oh, no. My family's leaving. Leaving? When? In an hour. You could say they make for an odd couple, but Abby and Eric are probably the most normal people on the show. Although they even each other out, Abby is nonetheless reluctant to confront her feelings. I want to go with you. You can't. You know that. I have to go. When it looks like Abby and her parents will have to go on the run, however, she finally lays her cards on the table. Knowing that time is of the essence, Abby suggests that they share a kiss goodbye, to which Eric agrees. Should we kiss? I feel like if we kiss, I'll never see you again. Yeah. Let's kiss anyway. Abby dives right into the smooch and Eric comes back for seconds. Cute, casual, and just a little uncomfortable, it's certainly a fitting kiss for these two. Well, we did that. Yes, we did. Number nine. Joel and Sheila are captured. It can't end like this. It can't! As adorable as Abby and Eric are, it's Sheila and Joel who give the show its beating heart. The connection between this couple is thicker than blood, and they always have each other's backs. When Dobrovoj Poplovic chains up Joel and impales Sheila to the wall, it appears they may go down together. Fortunately, Sheila has inadvertently started something of a cult, finding dedicated followers in Tommy, Jean, and Ron. The trio storms the hideout to rescue their savior and her husband. This is so freaking cool. As exciting as this prison break is, there's still time for some humorous banter as Tommy and Joel fight over who gets to wield the crossbow. By the way, is that my crossbow? No, it's my crossbow. Oh, you mean the one that's mine that you found in my house? Give it. It's a good thing Tommy handed the weapon to Joel, who pops an arrow through Poplovic's head. Now let's go. Number eight. Sheila and Jean eat a nurse. Amanda, we know you took Jean's money. We have the bank records to prove it, so you just need to reimburse her. After Sheila bites her, Jean is given a new lease on life. Well, a new lease on death. Despite Sheila's best efforts, Jean is resolute on killing her landlord, who has apparently been ripping her off. Doing a little digging, Sheila discovers that it's actually Jean's caregiver who's been stealing from her. Uh-oh. I've upset the volunteer and the half-dead lady. Actually... Jean's completely dead, and so am I. Sheila initially tries to resolve the situation peacefully, but it doesn't take long for her to see that Amanda is overdue for her just desserts. Sheila and Jean might have gotten off on the wrong foot, but sinking their teeth into Amanda's neck and devouring her gallbladder ends up being an enlightening bonding experience. Reflecting on how they've treated their daughters, Sheila and Jean find they have more in common than just bloodlust. You know, Jean, don't listen to Amanda when she says those things about your daughter. You could taste in her gallbladder how bitter she was. Number seven, Abby injects herself. Being surrounded by death brings out Abby's demented sense of humor and rebellious outlook on life. Holy shit. What are you doing? Something selfless. When Eric and Dr. Wolf create a cure for Sheila, Abby volunteers herself as a test subject. Without even saying anything, she injects herself with the experimental serum, acting as if it were an over-the-counter drug. Eric and Wolf fear the worst when Abby starts convulsing, but it turns out that she was only kidding. Really, I'm fine. I just... Just... Oh god, she's convulsing. Don't Abby? Don't bite her tongue. I'll get my medical bag. Abby? Oh, uh, don't grab the bag. I was kidding. I'm fine. The fact that Abby would joke about something so dire is already darkly hilarious, but she doesn't stop there. Look, just because I'm being selfless doesn't mean I'm not going to get back at you for sending me to get snacks when it's my mom who's sick and... <laughs> Dr. Wolf, what's happening? Eric, grab my medical bag. <laughs> again. Kidding. She pretends to convulse again, and again, and again, never failing to cause a panic. Not every gag is funny four times in a row, but Abby's commitment only leaves us laughing harder and harder. Oh my god. Abby? Abby, can you hear me? Yeah, what? 
I hate you so much right now. Your commitment is outstanding. Number six, till death do us part. No, you were right. Becoming undead does scare me. But when I thought I was gonna die, what scared me most was that I'd never see you again. Throughout season three, Sheila pleads with Joel to let her bite him so they can spend eternity together. Joel isn't sure if he can commit to eating people or being in a relationship with Sheila forever. After giving it some thought, however, Joel decides that life and death would be empty without her. I love you. That's all that matters. So bring it on! This revelation couldn't have come at a more convenient time, as Mr. Ball Legs suddenly crawls inside Joel's head. Oh my god! Unsure what to do, Sheila gives Joel a kiss and then gives him a bite. As an undead Joel opens his eyes, the sly bloody smile on Sheila's face says it all. It was a killer way to close out the season, although it appears we may never find out what happens next. Joel? Hello. Number five, Anne finds out. You're not gonna shoot me. I will shoot you. You're not gonna shoot Oh my god, new plan! Following a trail of carnage, Anne inevitably realizes that Sheila and Joel are the murderers she's been pursuing. Anne appears to have everything figured out, but she's thrown for a loop when Sheila survives multiple gunshots. Okay, you shot me. It's your training, I'm not mad. Since Sheila has risen from the dead and smites the wicked, Anne jumps to the conclusion that she's a Christ-like figure. In a way, it's like what you do, only we're volunteers. While Joel and Sheila aren't looking to start a religion, they don't deny Anne's accusations. It's not not what we're saying. Gary's severed talking head further exhibits Sheila's ability to grant eternal life, but Anne needs one last sign from God. She can grant eternal life! Eternal! Fortunately, Abby and Eric happened to blow up a fracking site right then. If this is your doing, show me a sign. This ending cleverly brings all of season two's major subplots together, wrapping things up in a tidy yet messy package. Number four, disposing of the first body. Guess what Kelly told me last night? She and Ben are selling their home. It's a beautiful property. Great location, new kitchen, marble countertops, detached bonus room. Much of the humor in Santa Clarita diet stems from how the Hammonds try to maintain an everyday life even when they're literally covered in blood. After Sheila spontaneously kills Gary, she tries to ease the tension by talking business while Joel digs a hole in the desert. The listing. That'd be great, honey. We can't be realtors if we don't have listings. Gary's remains have been piled into a container, but Joel and Sheila's biggest concern is that they couldn't find the lid. Would have been nice to have the lid. <laughs> couldn't find it. Right. Although this argument seems rather petty given the circumstances, the lid really would have come in handy, since the container tips over as a car pulls up. Do not bring up the lid. While it's just Eric and Abby, the forced grins on Joel and Sheila's faces as they try to cover up this obvious crime scene epitomizes the show's twisted tone. We say we came across this murder site and we're just cleaning it up. Who cleans up murder sites? I don't know, we're Mormons. Number three, Joel kills Dan. So kill her. I got another guy who needs to go. Burying a body for your spouse is one thing, but Joel's devotion to Sheila is truly tested when Dan catches on to them. No, we're not done, buddy. I got two murders on you. Dan tries blackmailing his neighbors into killing a couple of people, but Joel is eventually motivated to take a stand. The tables don't turn in Joel's favor, though, as Dan points out that he has a lot more dirt on him and Sheila. When Dan threatens to lock up Sheila, Joel is driven to whack the crooked cop on the head with a shovel. Is there anything else you're good at, Joel? Anything at all? I'm pretty good with a shovel. With Dan pushing up daisies, Joel demonstrates just how far he's willing to go to protect Sheila. The tear gas grenade Eric buried doesn't go to waste either, as it makes it look like Dan went out on a fart. Number two, Gary's head. Oh my God, he's still alive. Gary isn't just Sheila's first kill, but also the first person she reanimates. It isn't until season two that anyone realizes this, however, as Sheila and Joel unearth Gary's head. All this time you've just been lying awake here in this hole? In a pudding of my own guts. This is perhaps the most surreal moment in the show, but it ends up being more than just a throwaway gag. Gary becomes a regular player from this point on, creating a hysterical dynamic between the talking head and the people who desecrated the rest of his body. As funny and bizarre as the situation is, we also get some unexpected character development as Gary repents for his past mistakes. 
Gary reveals his surprisingly sweet side when he asks the Hammonds to look out for his niece. How can you say no to that face? Please, I'm the only family Kayla has. I can't bear her thinking that I've abandoned her. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. <sighs> I really do have to get better at this. Freeze. Whoa, Tommy! I think there's a misunderstanding. We're just here to look at those files. Number one, Sheila's first kill. Your unwillingness to take no for an answer has made me feel sexy and desirable. Although Gary evolves into a redeemable character, he starts off as an egotistical jerk. When he sexually assaults Sheila in the first episode, we feel nothing but satisfaction when she goes from licking his fingers to biting them off. From there, she turns Gary's intestines into an all-you-can-eat meat platter. When Joel stumbles upon this gruesome scene, Sheila professes how much she wants to make their marriage work, neglecting the body she was just feasting upon. All Joel can do is send her a priceless WTF expression. Joel and Sheila's marriage may have its problems, but if they could overcome this crazy hurdle, there is nothing their relationship can't survive. As Gary is torn apart, Joel and Sheila are ironically brought closer together. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.